So you're thinking about moving to Florida and you live out of state or definitely out of our area and you want to know, hmm, what do I need to know before I move to Florida, before I relocate? Well, we've got 10 important things to consider before you move. So stay tuned. It's going to be a good one. Welcome back to the channel. Um, as you can see, we're going to be doing some different things here, shooting different uh, places. And we like to take walks in the morning, so we figured we'd just bring you along with us. Uh, we already have been to the riverfront um, for a video. In this video, we are walking down the trail. It's called the Railroad Trail? Uh, I think so. Um, and it goes from the North County Pool in Sebastian, and we're heading west towards Felsmere right now. It's a really nice, just quiet walkway. I hope you enjoy them. Uh, so today we're gonna to be talking about the 10 things you should know before you move to Florida. And I just thought the first one, because it's such a nice day today, was to, number one, be grateful for the weather that we're having right now. I mean, what a gorgeous day. It's a little bit chilly. Yeah, this is cold for Florida. Not quite humid. Florida girls. But that, uh, that brings me to, to the first subject. It's humid in Florida for most of the year. And when I say humid, I mean, it's wet. You know, you, you, you go outside and you're gonna be sweating pretty good. Um, and I, this is, I, for, most of you peop, for most of you guys, it's not gonna be something new. You already know this. Um, but, and it might be actually refreshing to some of you who may be moving from states with drier climates. Oh. You know, like I'm, you know, if you don't know from me Colorado. by now, from Colorado, and I'm gonna take my lovely wife out there. Oh my gosh, it's so dry. My nose like bleeds <laughs> inside sometimes. Like, oh. Yeah, it, it's, and my now hair. that I've lived here, it's for a long time, it's, you know, going back there, it's dry. So it, it, it is refreshing to come to it, but when you live here, it starts to be kind of burdensome. You know, for you ladies out there, your hair can get frizzy <laughs> and you know you're sweating it's hard to wear like if you are a professional uh, and you wear suits and ties yeah. it's you know it's tough to to wear those and, and be outside if you're a golfer you know and you want to play golf during summer you know choose the right fabric right moisture yeah. wicking I recommend cotton because um, cotton that's breathes and you know you wear that polyester stuff it looks cool but oh my gosh it's it, like sweating in a bag what is this nonsense wicking technology <laughs> doesn't wick anything <laughs> it sounds cool but yeah <laughs> no you've got to wear light fabrics breathable fabrics what are some other things you need to do because it's so stinking hot and humid i mean really just dress light and be prepared yeah, I, you know, keep a towel with you, you know, so you can wipe off your forehead um, and be prepared to take a lot of showers. <laughs> Anything else to add to that? You know, I used to drive the beverage cart back in my college days. And um, you need to sit on a towel when you're driving the golf cart because your uh, butt sweats. Oh, yeah. and you stick to the seat? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for those of you with like pleather seats or leather seats, you might want to do the same thing as well. Okay. Um, so that's, uh, that's number one, humidity. Okay, so we're talking about humidity there and you know what you can do? You could just jump right into your pool. Oh, that's a good idea. 100% <laughs> humidity in your pool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a good kind of humidity. It is. So, you know, talking about pools in Florida, it's something you don't, you won't think about. Um, if you don't have a screen around your pool, so your pool is exposed and the pool deck's exposed, you know, the pool decks get really hot. Yeah. They can get really hot, especially if you do like a darker color around the exterior of your pool. You yeah, know, it could the pool be either deck. pavers or paint or, or yeah. anything like that, the darker colors. They get hot. Yeah, while well, they look good and they hide the dirt and all, um, they definitely can be hot on your feet. Same with like your driveways. You know, we had a stained oh, yeah. driveway. Oh, that thing was so hot in the summertime. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
uh, and the pools get warm without a screen. Um, yep. And while that feels awesome in the summertime, you know, what about the wintertime? Well, you know, obviously it's nicer here than most of the country during the wintertime. That's why we have a lot of folks coming here, snowbirding. Um, and we're seeing more and more people make the move here. And everybody wants a pool. Everybody and everybody wants, wants a pool. Yeah. Everybody wants a pool. But the pools actually are chilly in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. You think you don't need the pool heater because, oh, it's Florida and it's hot. Well, the water temperature drops. And then when you get a bunch of rain, the temperature also drops. So if you're looking to swim year round, definitely consider the pool heater. Well, look at it this way. If you're going to come here and you're going to purchase a house and you know, uh, I mean, the majority of folks, like she said, want to have a pool. Uh, if you're buying a house that doesn't have a pool and you're gonna install a pool yourself, you're looking at possibly a 75 to $80,000 bill to get a pool with a cage installed. Cage is a screen enclosure. The screen enclosure. Mm -hmm. People call it bird cage, screen enclosure. Um, and if you're spending that kind of money and you don't put an extra three to five grand in for a water for a pool heater you are skimping you're not going you're to be able to enjoy it. your pool year round yeah and and so it, you know you want to be able to swim in that pool during this beautiful weather yeah it's a little chilly outside but man getting in that pool and it's 78 degrees 76 degrees it's a lot different than getting in an 85 degree pool totally tawny can attest to that she keeps <laughs> it at 88. i like it I, I don't like to flinch when I get in. <laughs> <laughs> She's a Florida girl. Um, but yeah, so Pool. pools get hot in the summer. Pool decks, make sure you don't paint it dark. And if you do, make sure you've got some good coverage so your little feetsies don't burn. <laughs> and uh, there's a thing called cool deck you can paint on it or uh, you can spray, it's called spray deck. They just look that up, cool deck and uh, that'll keep it cool mm -hmm. think light colors and in the winter time definitely get a pool heater i recommend it oh crap what let's talk about septic tanks <laughs> that was off the cuff <laughs> can't help it um all uh, right septic tanks and gotta have one unless you're well. one of the few very few older homes here in Sebastian that are on the city sewer system, mm -hmm. um, you're gonna have a septic tank. Yeah, most, most houses, unless you are in certain areas, especially here in Sebastian, there's certain areas in Vero Beach, but most houses in an HOA will be on a county or a city water um, system and then a, sep a sewer system. Yep. Uh, those are called public utilities. But most houses are going to have a septic tank. And if you're not from, if you're from an area that you don't have septic tanks and you're not familiar with it, what it is, is it's a tank that's buried in the ground about your house, around your house somewhere. Not around the entire house, but like, yeah, like in an area. in the front yard or on the side. And that's where all the waste and water goes from your house. From your and showers, from your toilet. It collects the solids and then the water is leached out into drain. underneath your yard, into the drain, drain field. And that's just the way it's been done for many, many years. And it's still being done that way. There's a bit of controversy around it, but it, it still happens uh, in construction. And one thing you wanna make sure that you pay attention to is if you have a septic tank, number one, you wanna get it inspected when you're purchasing a home. Septic inspection. Septic inspection. And number two, you want to make sure that you service this. It will need to be pumped out, and it's going to depend on the size of the, your family or the amount of people living in your house mm -hmm. using the facilities. Uh, I recommend once every year, and we recommend a guy by the name of Tommy Hinkle here in the Vero Beach, Sebastian area. We love him. He's the man. Look him up. Uh, but that's it. That's really all I have to say about septic tanks. It is, you know, it's a necessity. You've got to have them. Yep. Uh, when you're building a house, I mean, if you don't have the ability to connect to the public system, you're getting a septic tank, you got to maintain it. If you're buying a uh, resale, make sure you get a septic inspection, make sure everything's working properly. 
it can cost anywhere from four to ten grand to, re to, to replace or repair those. Yeah, and hey, you know, take care of your septic system. You don't want to flush weird things down yeah. the yeah. toilet. Um, no feminine products. Do, don't flush those. Those are those are bad. So yeah, we've got plumber friends, and they uh, they are they do not recommend having like a garbage disposal. I mean, we have one, but we're pretty careful about what goes down there. Yeah, you don't just like, if you're used to just throwing stuff down the garbage disposal, don't do that here. You know, what's a really big thing that gets thrown down the garbage disposal that's like terrible for it? Eggshells. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep, eggshells. I don't know, I just know that um, the plumbers have gone out many times to fix garbage disposals because of eggshells. It's like a simple Whoa. thing. So don't drop your eggshells uh, down there. Little golden nugget for you right there. I mean, little piece, you'll be okay. But like, don't be continuously throwing eggshells. <laughs> <laughs> Throw them away. Put them in the garden. And grease. Duh. I think everyone yeah. knows that. Don't but don't dump in. grease in there. Okay. Oh, that's it. All right. Number four thing you need to know before moving to Florida is storage can be an issue. It can be a major issue. Uh, most of the houses here are built slab on grade. What that means, it's a concrete slab on dirt. And below that dirt, about three to maybe five to 10 feet is water. <laughs> it's called a water table. And you cannot build a basement here. So we don't have a lot of places to put your stuff. We've talked about this in previous videos, but uh, this is a big deal, so. We use attics, we have places, we well, have yeah. attics. Well, yeah, okay, so, but attics are cool, but attics get, well, no, they're not cool, they're hot. <laughs> they're extremely hot. <laughs> and they, if you have anything rubber or anything that's gonna disintegrate over time, even plastic bags, they just start to kind of disintegrate up there. They do. But heat so the cares. attic is not really the best place to leave, to leave your, uh, your stuff, it is, it's where most people put put their stuff. Yeah, because, you know, what are you gonna do? So that's like inside the house. There's a huge business in storage facilities here. Mm -hmm. uh, so plan on putting some money into a storage facility if you hold on to your stuff, if you have, need, need, have a need for storage. What else, Tanya? Um, well, you know, in your attics, um, the newer homes, they put uh, attic fans in there to try to help pull okay. some of the heat out. So that's kind of a cool feature. And if your house doesn't have an attic fan, you can certainly install one. Um, For those of you who have more than one car, because the typical two car garage is really only gonna hold one car and then some boxes. I know, they lie. So, um, you know, the three car garage is kind of a nice feature because you can put two cars in it and maybe some boxes or a golf cart. Yep. If you have toys like boats, Campers. RVs, Yep. Side by sides. It's going to be tough too. You know, a lot of the lots here, most of the lots are going to be on quarter acre lots or maybe just a little slightly smaller than a quarter acre lot, depending on where you go. And you can't you, fit everything on there. You can't. As a matter of fact, we just saw somebody pouring a slab on the side of their house. It's a smaller house. So they had the space to pour a little extra driveway on the side of their, on their house. And they'll be able to park an extra car or an RV or a boat or something. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see a lot of folks doing. Yeah. Is that, so storage can be an issue. Be prepared to, you know, pare down is really what you should do. <laughs> um, if you do decide to pour that extra driveway, uh, you have to get it permitted if you go with concrete. Mm -hmm. I think if you do like a crushed shell or gravel, I don't think that has to be permitted. Mm, double check that. Yeah, double check. Now that's it, storage. Okay, hey, since we're talking about garages, let's talk about some stuff that you should have in your garage. Okay. So now that you're, you know, gonna be a transplant to Florida, um, you should probably get a generator. Mm. Um, you should sell that snow blower and buy a pressure washer. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you don't need the snow blower here, so make sure you don't put that on the moving truck. <laughs> Uh, because you're not going to have much of a market for it here. If you're if you have an oak tree nearby, you'll need a blower. Yep. That's the kind of blower you'll need. So we're talking about some things you need to have in your garage. Yeah. Important things that you will always use. Oh, and we got some bikers. Give me a blower. That'll be a generator. Morning. And a lot of people are going to sit. You know, may think like lawnmower. I'm going to just say no on the lawnmower because we talked about humidity. I think it's probably not going to be very long till you realize it is no fun mowing your lawn during the summer months. 
<laughs> so you're gonna want to hire somebody out for that. I mowed our lawn for years. Yeah, you did. You don't anymore, and neither do I because it's just. <laughs> well, those unless, guys are done in like five minutes. It's amazing. It's to so worth the cost to have somebody mow your lawn. Approximately a hundred dollars a month. Yeah. And in the summer, they're there once a week. They mow, edge, and blow. Yeah. And the grass grows really fast. And then in the winter time, they scale it back because the grass isn't growing so fast. So you know, if you're if you're trying to save a few bucks, you can hire them for the summertime, and then do it yourself in the winter time. But this means you're going to have to have a lawn mower mm -hmm. uh, in your garage. So I recommend it. She says. Maybe you can well, do it yourself. Well, it just depends what you what you like. I mean, you can also take care of your pool yourself. But, um, yeah. you know, if you're retired and you have the time and you maybe want a riding lawnmower, okay. get a riding lawnmower. Everybody's lawnmower. going to have different circumstances, right? Yeah. We're talking about storage, uh, kind of, uh, and the things you need to have in your garage. So, so the generator. Yes, and when you do run that generator, you know, storm time, you have to be smart about it. You don't want to run it in your home. Um, you want it to be outside in a well-ventilated area. Mm -hmm. um, the pressure washer is a necessity because of the humidity. It gets moldy. Yep, yep. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Good morning. morning. Yeah, um, it you know gets moldy, and you got to pressure wash the driveway and the pool deck, and yeah. just kind of really depends. Also, you know, if you have a lot of shade coverage uh, and it's moist, you know, that's a perfect moldy yep. breeding area. Yep. So that brings us to the next thing that you should know, because she's mentioning mold. So there's a lot of mold here in Florida mm -hmm. because it's humid and hot. You combine the hot heat and humidity and even cool air, it can create mold and algae and growth. And specifically on like northern exposure parts of your house where right. you're not getting a lot of sun. Yeah. <clears throat> so you're just kind of moist on the northern parts and uh, that's why you would want to have a pressure washer because it will be a regular deal where you're going to want to go out and pressure wash things and you know, maybe once every six months just to keep it clean and, and, and non moldy and fresh looking and fresh looking yeah. so that's a short one it does get moldy but uh if you have that ma um, that pressure washer you'll be able to take care of it it's easy to keep up with. and uh, you know hey if you're retired and you don't want a pressure wash hire it out there's tons of pressure washing yeah. companies got a lot of service people that can do stuff like that so since we were talking about mowing the grass and stuff, I figured we can talk about the grass. Oh, let's do. Right? So there's different types of grass here, mainly two types that are different. What are they? Bahia and uh, St. Augustine. All right. And I, each I mean, one of them require different, different levels of care. Sure. Tell us about that, Tanya. You know about this stuff. So Bahia is like super low maintenance, really easy, very drought tolerant. So you really don't need to have a sprinkler system for Bahia. It will look like, you know, it dies off in the winter time. Um, we're not getting much rain, it's cold and all dry. So it does look like it dies back, but it really, it comes back as soon as it gets rained on. It's very hardy. And then you have St. Augustine, which is that thicker, more lush looking grass. It's a darker green and it's, you know, real smooth and it's kind of a tight, grass it grows really tight that's a higher maintenance grass um, it does require regular watering and if you don't keep it watered it will die and it doesn't come back it does spread so but you don't want to you know it's expensive the the St. Augustine is expensive so you really don't want it to die yeah I recommend if you're going to have St. Augustine that you have a working or an operable sprinkler system yeah and preferably on a well because if you're using county or city water your bill's going to be a little bit higher because you're watering your right your yeah. grass with that water if you have a well then it's just electricity and it doesn't use the pump doesn't use that much much electricity totally um, so when you do purchase a home and you've got saint augustine grass uh, make sure that it's got a sprinkler system that works and if mm -hmm. it doesn't work you're going to want to get that fixed right away or else that grass is going to die mm -hmm. So while we're on the pest control, yeah, while we're <laughs> pest control, while we're on the subject of you know all these services and things that you have to do and you know, grass you got to take care of, you know there's bugs. There's bugs in Florida. That's no surprise. <gasps> and 
they'll get into your house yeah. unless you have um, bug control, pest yeah. control. You can do this, again, this is one of those things you can do yourself. Yep. But you know, before you know it, you're gonna have a full-time job taking care of your house um, <laughs> with all these services that you could hire out. And instead you could be out playing golf or being on the beach and have this stuff uh, taken care of for you. So pest control is another thing that you need to do because it's like monthly or quarterly service and we've got cockroaches and we've got ants, ants, lots of ants, a little crazy ants. They run around and they like sugar um, spiders. You're going to have to put your things away in your house, put a cover on your sugar, yeah. um, you know, wrap up your, your food cereal. Oh, you know, I know this is like back to the humidity, but I was blown away in Colorado, you leave the cereal box open and the next day your cereal is not all stale. That's a beautiful thing. <laughs> no, you have to close the cereal box. And if you leave a magazine, oh, this is still humid. If you leave a magazine outside, the next day it's kind of wrinkly. It's not like <laughs> California when we were visiting your stepmom. Yeah. Her, we left the magazine out and the next day I went outside. And it was still perfect. Yeah, you don't have that here. Don't leave your books or your computers, electronics. Uh, anything that's like paper outside overnight yeah. because uh, because of the humidity. Mm -hmm. We're talking about pests here. So sorry. That's okay. I, I mean, digress. Well, okay. We I've got all kinds of things to talk about. <laughs> so yeah, pet pests, they're a real deal. You got They're a real thing here in Florida. You're going to deal with them. Um, Regular preventative maintenance really is your best yep. bet for dealing with them. Um, if you're not deal, if you're like doing damage control, you might need to bug bomb the house my grandparents used to do that all the time <laughs> uh, but you might need to do that you might have to hit it hard you might have you know call the professionals in if you've got ants and they might just need to really do a full extermination and treat the house and i'm not yeah. talking about tinting the house that's for termites yeah. and that's a that's a whole another ball of that's a whole different animal whole another ball of wax <laughs> and uh yeah that's a serious deal and um it can happen yeah. um there's also termite prevention so, you know, and I think we've talked about this in one of our last videos, just because you have a concrete block home doesn't mean you are, you know, yeah, uh, exempt from get, yeah, exempt from getting termites. There are actually termites called like super termites or something that will spit an acid that eats through concrete. So anyway, there's bugs here in Florida is where the point that I'm trying to make. Not to freak you out because <laughs> I mean, rare. I truly haven't encountered any yeah. of those termites, but you know, they do exist. Yeah, so, so with, with the bug, bugs, you just have to take care of them. You just hire a service and you don't worry about it. There are companies uh, like Massey and Stark and you know, Pelican. Uh, oh, Sandpiper. Sandpiper, sorry. They're local and they'll give you warranties and guarantees that you won't have any bug intrusion. So there's tons uh, of pest companies. That's something I would recommend you just hire out because there are bugs. You go. Another actionable item or hire out item is uh, air conditioning service. Yeah, keeping with the service themes and the things that you need to have. Well, you live in Florida, so you've got to have an air conditioner. Yeah. I mean, unless you're one of those people who can you know, and we've know some of them uh, who can open the windows and they're good with 85 degrees in their house. Uh, most people are not. So you're going to be running that air conditioner most of the year. Mm -hmm. There are only going to be a few times of the year when you just open up your windows and you let it all flow. But even during the daytime, you know, noon, it gets a little bit warm even during the winter time. Uh, so you'll be running that air conditioner. It's going to get a lot of work. It's going to affect your uh, electrical bill. Definitely. And, and it's you, going to need service. Yeah, you want to maintain that because it is, uh, it's a key element of your home and your comfort. Yep. We've got a bunch of bikers passing us. Oh, now. we got a big big bike thing going on here. Good morning. <laughs> These guys are serious, man. Look at that. Yeah. Watch out. Hey, this is a cool trail. So if you do like biking, hook up with those guys. <laughs> Okay, so your air conditioner. Um, there's some simple things that you can do to keep it running smoothly. Uh, there's that little overflow drain. Mm -hmm. uh, you wanna pour a little vinegar in there periodically so that the mold and slime doesn't build up. Mm -hmm. That's like a simple thing. Um, and I know 
the guys, the air conditioner guys get called out all the time for that. Yeah, yeah, it'll stop your air conditioner from working and it's like, ooh, massive freak out session. It's <laughs> happened to us, like, Everyone. oh my gosh. And it usually happens when you're not at the house or you're uh, like on vacation or something and the AC got, stops working. You've got someone staying at your house, yeah. taking care of your pets. Yep. Yeah. Uh, sorry, mom and dad. Now this is big for you guys too that are thinking about moving here and purchasing maybe an Airbnb. Um, this is something you're gonna wanna pay attention to is all the serviceable items and air conditioning is gonna be a big one. Mm -hmm. You don't want your guests or even your, you know, your family who might be staying at the house to suffer a day without e AC because it gets really hot and really humid inside your house pretty darn quickly. True that. All right, so service your AC and count on it. Let's talk about plumbing. Ooh, Ooh. that sounds fun. Talk about your pipes. Um, if you buy a house that was built anywhere in the 80s or 90s, more than likely it was built with copper pipes. And copper pipes only last so long. They, the copper pipes have a reaction with, um, what is it in the soil? Uh, I don't know, they just, they, they, they deteriorate over time. Yeah, and they spring, spring holes. And uh, I mean, you can have slab leaks. All kinds of... What a slab leak is, is, you know, most of these houses were built with the piping underneath the slab. The and then the concrete mm -hmm. slab is poured on grade over top of all that stuff. And so when these pipes bust, which they will, the water will start to come up through your, your slab and it looks like your slab is just like seeping water and it will ruin your floors, it can ruin your cabinetry and your furniture. Mm -hmm. um, so it can be a big deal. Um, your house will need to be repiped. Yeah, not only will you have insurance damage, uh, damage to, to your flooring and, and stuff, but you're gonna, you're gonna need to have your pipes re, redone and they usually will run it up through the attic. So they find the main manifold and they just basically cut all the pipes and then rerun everything up through the, the uh, manifold. And that's a pretty big expense. Uh, uh, up through the wall, through the attic, through the attic yeah. and you know, through the manifold to your shower or toilet or whatever. Yep. It's actually so much easier than chipping up your concrete slab, your floor, whatever you have, you know, mm -hmm. wood, tile, carpet. This way they just, they find the leak and they, yeah, they replumb it and, um, so if you buy a house that's built in the 80s or 90s, you wanna ask if the house has already been repiped. Uh, if it hasn't, I mean, don't freak out, but it is something to prepare for and yep. plan. Um, you can't expect every, everything to be done for you. Well, maybe you can, it just depends on your price range. There are plumbers, uh, we know some great ones that know how to do this. They do this on a regular basis. Uh, you're probably looking at anywhere between eight you and know, eight and $12,000 to have it repiped. Mm -hmm. So calculate that into your purchase. Mm -hmm. Make sure that the home value is where you want it to be. Yep. Um, and just because one pipe leaks, don't assume that the entire house has been repiped. You know, because right. I, our first house, you know, we we could only afford to you know do one pipe at a time. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes they do that. They just repair the one that's leaking. Yeah. Um, that's obviously going to cost you more cumulatively if you do it that way then just getting the whole thing done because it will eventually happen where you're going to need the whole thing to get repiped. Mm -hmm. So um, just think about that when you're purchasing a home and uh, whatever real estate agent you use they should know this so make sure you ask this question uh, what year the house is or pay attention to what year the house is. Yeah. All right and the the final thing we're going to talk now about Two things, it's a bonus item. Ah, bonus. Number one, we'll talk about roofs. All right, since we're talking about things you gotta pay attention to when purchasing a house. Uh, pretty much the long and short of it is, roofs are kind of an issue right now oh. uh, in the state of Florida. Um, it's in hard to get insurance for a roof that's 15 years or older. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to struggle. Either that or your insurance rates are gonna be like really expensive and insurance rates are going up right now. We've talked about this before several times in other videos, so I don't want to beat a dead horse, but pay attention to it. It's going to happen. You know, if you're moving here from a high tax state, now you're going to be moving to a place with a high insurance state. True. So keep that in mind. We got lower taxes. We might have lower taxes than your state, but most likely we're going to have higher insurance rates and they're not going to go down. All right. So keep that, keep that in mind. 
the roof is a big issue uh, when it comes to that. We're seeing a lot of roofs being replaced with um, standing seam metal roofs. <clears throat> That's nice. Those. Which are nice. And you also want to have straps put on your, you know, on your roof. That's going to be inside the attic. So you, uh, in your wind mitigation report, that's going to show whether or not you've got the proper up to code straps that could cost you a few extra grand to get those installed, but it will make it impact on your insurance rates. So that's all I'm going to say about roofs. You want to learn more about how that whole thing is going down. Just give us a call. We'll talk to you about that. And finally, uh, flood zones? Flood zones. Oh, yay, flood zones. Well, yay. it's Florida, people. It's a flood zone. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Did She's you just going to break it down to you like that. <laughs> Keep it real. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like you said, what's the water table? Three, five feet down? Yeah, just depending on where you are. If you're on a sand ridge, great. Um, we have those things called sand ridges. It's about it's like our equivalent of a mountain here in Florida. Um, you know, if you live in a flood zone, you're going to have to have flood insurance. Um, That's an extra add-on to your insurance policy. Correct, correct. And you if, have to have it if you're gonna get a loan. Yes, exactly. If you've got a mortgage, <sighs> you have to have flood insurance if you live in a flood zone. Not everywhere is deemed a flood zone, even though I just, or I joke that, um, I mean, you know. it's Florida. It's pretty much a flood zone. I mean, most raw land is gonna be designated a flood zone <laughs> until it's built up and then they, you get an elevation certificate. And in that elevation certificate, it's gonna, it's gonna determine whether or not your elevation is high enough to get yourself out of that flood zone. Um, that's if you're building a new home. Most new builds generally are not gonna be in a flood zone, to, but it does depend on where, you're gonna, where you are. Like in Felsmere, you're gonna be in a flood zone for most of that place. And that's why the homes are, you know, built up. Yeah, if, you, if you've never been here, and you come here, you're gonna notice that the homes are built up on like a berm. You know, there's a, it's, it's lifted up and above ground level. And that's the reason why. Mm -hmm. uh, because we're pretty much at sea level here. But so. now a lot of these like highly desirable areas, you know, like if you wanna live over on the barrier island, it's considered a flood zone. I mean, fortunately, a lot of those places haven't flooded, but you just, it's an extra, insurance that you have to carry yeah so that's it guys i mean there's so much that so much information we can give you in one video uh, we hope you enjoy this i know we've gone over some of these things in other videos but we like to refresh it and also show you the beautiful scenery it's gorgeous here um if you'd like to know where we are just leave a comment and just ask us where this is and i'll give you the the map or the uh, you know the um the directions on how to get there yeah. Let's spit it out, Zach. <laughs> anyway, well, thanks. You're walking and talking. I'm walking and talking. Hey, it's been uh, really great sharing some information with you. If you would like to know more, if you're nice and you're cool, <laughs> we'll reply. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching and stay tuned. You got to smash that bell and that like button so you can get notified when we do drop new videos. We're trying to do it every week, uh, but we are super busy right now and we're gonna try to do, we're doing everything we can, but we do appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. And until so next much. time, bye-bye.